Today is Saturday and the beginning of day six of our experiment series. And so what we're going to do today is just do a little bit of a crop check in, uh, talk a little bit about some of the successes and challenges we're having, um, and then um, talk a little bit about methodology. So a lot of the method I worked out beforehand, I gave it a lot of thought. And then as I go through and do the experiment, I start seeing things that just aren't quite working as I thought or, or literally making mistakes. Now, with any experiment, it's nice to build on other people's work and do a lot of work ahead of time. Uh, and therefore, mistakes would be expected even in well-established protocol. Uh, and so you'll often do an experiment multiple times in order to refine things and whatnot. So I'm just going to talk about a few of the things that, that I'm experiencing that um, are good to keep in mind that will make my next trials much more effective. Uh, so first thing is uh, I have a limited amount of space here so what I did is I actually put my wheatgrass outside uh, and that coincided with a spell of really hot sunny weather here so I definitely got some scorching on my plants so I can see that's uh, affecting some of them uh, I had some redness in the stems I'm just sort of looking at them now I've brought those in so that redness is dying back and that's something you may have noticed in your crops before when you get a lot of heat and a lot of sunlight you get some red at the bottom of the stems it's actually quite attractive uh, but I can also see on some of these and I don't know if you'll be able to see it I'll put this up there a little bit um, you can see a little bit of yellowing in the leaves there I think you can get a little bit so that is a little bit of sun scorch that these have uh, experienced so so things not optimal in that regard However, what is important here that still uh, keeps relevance in our experiment is that these have all been exposed to the same treatment, so they were all in the sun. So even though this may not be perfectly transferable to a regular production, um, the, the results are still valid in the sense that we can see how everything relates to each other. So that's, that's an important aspect there. Um, it's unfortunate the limitation on space, and I'm tempted to buy another set of lights for here. Um, we'll see if I end up doing that or not. Uh, okay, so with sunflower, a quick note here is just a, a significant difference between the two uh, trials. Uh, one of them is, is definitely smaller than the other one, um, which is fine. Once again, we're comparing treatments there. Uh, the question is why that is. Did I just give one tray more water than the other one? Uh, is one of the heat pads warmer than the other? Is this distance from the window making a difference? And I have been switching the position of these trays, so they're both getting on 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 uh, the both sides. So one of my strategies for the next one will be every day I'll switch the trays during the germination phase as well, because I only did that after I uncovered them. So things like that will make a difference in in the next uh, series. Um, so those are two things about that I'm just noticing about the methodology, and those are easy things to correct. And so in the next series, those will be improved. The other thing is I sort of uh, I came across a, a, a program on my phone that I forgot I had that is usually used in the field that I think is actually going to be a very useful tool for for this uh, series, especially for for sewing rates. And it's a program where you take a, a photo of, of a plot of, uh, you know, plants growing in soil usually outdoors and, and these work just as fine and then what then what it does is it analyzes the amount of green space there or foliar coverage it has and so I really like that because it allows us to take this this uh, this area and do that photo and have this very quantitative measurement and as long as I'm consistent in that um, that'll be a good uh, indicator to use for uh, for density of growth and things like that it's a little tricky with sunflower because where the hulls exist, uh, that is going to register not as foliage. So with sunflower, we're looking at both like foliage and hull removal at the same time with that method. Where with wheatgrass, uh, which the, in which the seed sits on the soil surface and the crop grows up, it's definitely going to be a better indicator. And that's the sort of thing it's often used for in the field is, is coverage of, of a grass crop or a cover crop. So the problem, uh, or the uh, sorry, the uh, the program is called Canapeo, and I'll uh, I'll put a link to that in the uh, in the discussion or in the uh, comment section as well, so people can see that. So start of day six, uh, nothing really to do here. I'm just keeping an eye on tray weights, so to make sure everything is well watered. Um, uh, this will be a, a good day to just watch. Uh, this is a point where things really start taking off in terms of growth. 
Uh, the wheatgrass has now had two full days of light and the sunflowers just had one full day of light. So we're looking for, for a lot of that growth, uh, the main growth to start taking place over the next few days. So we'll do another check in on Sunday, which is the beginning of day seven. Our targeted harvest date for the wheatgrass is on day eight on Monday. Uh, so we'll be looking to do that still. And uh, yeah, if any uh, other insights arise, I'll shoot another video. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you in our next session.